Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. Have some exciting news. So today, first off, we're going to talk Cowboys, bye week, recent acquisitions. I'm here again with my boy, Mr. Brandon Arrington. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Uh, just a few points of housekeeping before we get started. Recently, we launched a SoundCloud page. We've gotten many, many requests. Those of you who want more of our longer, deeper conversations in podcast form, a lot of people have been hitting me up saying, hey, I listen to your stuff on the go, want to listen to it in the car. YouTube's not necessarily the best platform for that. So we've been converting everything into MP3s. And this, this episode, as, as well as some of the other ones we've done in the past, will be available on the Fanatic Perspective SoundCloud page. I will have the link in the description below. Now to what we want to talk about, Dallas Cowboys. Mm. You and I sat here last week. We talked to the people. We gave our per predictions. I was wrong, unfortunately. <laughs> you were right, unfortunately. Unfortunately, indeed. You mentioned last week you didn't trust them on the road. Didn't. In your view, how did things play out? just want to get your quick insights on the Redskins game. How did things play out? But first, let me ask you this. Do you think the players meeting that that call, do you think that helped? No. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> First, I, I, I mean, the, I mean, because we said like it's all about the the how they start the game, right? How they start the game is usually indicative, right, of how things play out. And they started the game with penalties and and, and went down. Convert from there. on a third down penalty stops everything. I mean, the defense. I give I'll give credit to Washington's defense. They played really well. I mean, which I you, you, guys, you pointed out. Right. So guys, I was a, I was a top tier defense um, quietly, and they kind of showed it. They um, they were aggressive on the interior of our offensive line all day. Um, they stopped Zeke. Um, I don't think Zeke had a bad game. I just think that defense caused Zeke to have a bad game. Um, yeah, I was I was right in that pick. Unfortunately, on the road, but. It's unfortunate, too, because unfortunate. we wanted to get that momentum of being first place going into our bye week. Right. And, you know, especially after seeing the Eagles lose to the Panthers and a 17-point comeback for, for Carolina, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, wow, we really can build up some momentum. Instead, Washington was the one that built up some momentum. Now they're 4-2. Right. Now they're two games ahead of us. Right. And, you know, that leads us into what occurred a few days ago. Mm -hmm. We make a... Huge trade. We traded a first-round pick for Amari Cooper. Uh, I made a very emotional reaction video. And I, and I said it was emotional at, at the time. I, I found out I, I made that video 30 minutes after the trade had gone through. And I want to first get your thoughts before I kind of follow up now that I've had a few days to, <laughs> to sleep on it. Gotcha. But Amari Cooper to the Dallas Cowboys for a first-round pick. Obviously, we're going to... Uh, this is a, a serious investment we've made in a 24-year-old player, but just want to get your thoughts on it. <sighs> All right, where do I begin? A first-round draft pick, I think that's a reach for Amari Cooper. If this was 2016, all right, great. He makes that, that case is valid. Uh, but we're talking about a guy who in the past two years has only played 13 games, hasn't even played a full season. And yet we're willing to risk and draft our future uh, based on what we, based on a need that we do have, we do need a wide receiver one. Uh, but on someone who early in a career showed that, but as of recently has Struggled. not. Absolutely. Um, can you blame that on on his former team? Some sure, uh, but you know, he struggled under two different staff. I mean, everybody's struggling under John Gruden this year. So to <laughs> me, he kind of gets He's a pass. Enough. He kind of gets a pass for this season, and and. You know, if you look at the target seat, you can already, you guys can already hear myself as a Cowboys fan talking myself into this. You know, 32 targets this year. He's caught mm -hmm. 22, which is the best percent. I think it's like 68% or so gotcha. that he's converted in terms of having an opportunity to get the ball thrown to him. Mm -hmm. Now, what concerns me, first off, is he struggled under Jack, in the Jack Del Rio, you know, days for no reason. And what I'll, I'll get to this in a second, but just finish your thoughts on, on Amari and, and whatnot. Um, well... You, you did bring up a good point. He's a young player, so... 24. He's 24 years old, so there's still tire left on the tread, so to speak. Um, Hasn't uh, had any ligament or injuries. Or tread left on the tire, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, Hasn't had any ligament injuries, right. injuries no or anything like that. No soft tissue injuries that have dragged him out long term. So the potential is there. But if we're based off production the past two seasons and we're willing to give up a first-round draft pick, I don't see why we did it. Was it a little bit of an emotional... Um, reaction to the game? Possibly. I mean, these conversations have been going on 
what, the week prior? The week prior. Um, so it's all not week, like yeah. this popped up out of nowhere. But after seeing what our office did against Washington, it's like, all right, well, this we need something. We need gotcha. something different. Um, all right, we can go get Cooper for a first round. Let's try to do that and see what happens. But um, one thing I do, and we can probably touch on this later, one thing I do like about this pick, it'll be a great way to evaluate uh, Dak moving forward. So... Let's get let's get to that in a second. I want to re- respond to the video I did because I want to go through the the good the things we like about this trade and the things we we don't like. Okay. And I just right now just got your overall uh, opinion of it. For sure. Um, going into that video that I made, I was not aware or misinformed or whatever about the Eagles bidding. Uh, that definitely changes some things because the Eagles bidding a second rounder. I understand trying to trade block, so to speak. The Eagles have been very aggressive the last few years. Alshon Jeffrey and, and some of these other guys that they've... Tory Smith. Oh, the Tory Smith, acquiring assets just to make a move. Have they all worked out? No, but that aggressive nature helped them win a Super Bowl. Right. Even the trade, you know... Did they trade up for Carson Wentz? I think they traded up even for Carson... Oh, I think they did move I up think they did move up for Carson Wentz. But just overall, and if they didn't, somebody can correct me in the comments. For sure. But... That aggressive nature, a lot of fans have been wanting to see that. I had a great dialogue with with some of the subs uh, the other day, True Gooner, and some of the some, some of you guys. I appreciate y'all's uh, thoughts and comments. Just going back and forth, on, 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 trying to rationalize, rationalize this. There are some things I, I do like. Now sleeping on it, now really digesting and seeing him in the building, seeing him practicing with the team and. Really, because here's the thing. This is the point I want to make before we get into to your point, because you made a good point about Dak Prescott. Regardless if you hate the trade or love the trade, we're still on the same side because we need it to work. Right. No one should be rooting for for it to fail because or or, or making snide comments if he doesn't work out because it helps no one. That means the Cowboys are losing. At this point, he still has a star on his helmet. He has, so, yeah, absolutely. Whether you like the trade, agree I, with the trade, absolutely. still want him to succeed. In and I, I felt like, in, in if if those who I who I responded to you in the comments, that's been my position. Once he's a cowboy, now he's a cowboy. Like I'm all in. The team decided to go all in. I gotta go all in, right? So whatever they do, they gotta make this work, right? Right. So let's start off with the good. The biggest point that I love that you made was. We get to evaluate Dak Prescott. Touch mm-hmm. on that. So, biggest criticism all year going into Dak, we don't have a wide receiver one. We don't have that go-to threat, that go-to receiver when we need someone to make a play. Now we have that. Now, so now it doesn't become a fact of who is that person. We have that person. Now it's can one Dak get him the ball, mm-hmm. <laughs> give him an opportunity to create. Because I mean, you look at what, and I know you hate bringing up Romo, but you look at what Romo did that made Dez seem like an all-world receiver. He gave him a chance, and he. Throw 50-50 mm-hmm. ball. 50-50 ball. Develop half that confidence the time, in Right. Mm-hmm. He developed that relationship, that confidence with him. Half the time he'd come down with it. Sometimes he wouldn't. But he gave him the opportunity. So how does that uh, relationship materialize? Do they put in the extra work? He's coming in almost mid-season. Um, so he's not going to be up to speed. Are they going to put in the extra work after practice to make sure they're on the same page? Um, I think... That's going to be a big one. That is a Their big relationship, one. their working relationship from all accounts i know there was the one report that may or may not have been debunked about does amari cooper love football blah 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 but um for all 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 accounts it could have been good who knows <laughs> but i'll i don't know why but if if he's trying to get value or whatever but alabama you know coming from alabama great work ethic kept his mm-hmm. kept his head down and it's funny too because before i go to my good the parallel between Amari Cooper and Derek Carr and Des Bryant and Dak Prescott is crazy. If you go back and look at the 2016 season when Amari Cooper struggled, he had like 680 yards, I believe. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's the number. Dez's numbers were down. I think Dez's numbers were like seven or 800 yards receiving. Derek Carr's numbers and Dak Prescott's numbers, like touchdown interception ratio and I believe the yardage was nearly identical. Their quarterback rating was nearly identical. So some of the issues that that Amari Cooper had with Derek Carr is like really similar to the issues that Des Bryant had 
with Dak Prescott. I just think that's interesting. Now the good, the obvious good is his age. He's 24 years old, as we touched on earlier, Mm -hmm. with no injuries. Outside of the two-time Pro Bowler, he has shown to be productive in this league. He has real football speed. He's an excellent route runner. I agree with everybody there. And he can, he has shown the ability to climb the ladder and make aggressive catches, right. make contested catches, I should say, and after and yards after the catch. He looks probably one of the better receivers we've had since Dez at catching a slant and breaking some tackles. And, right. you know, you see him catching bubble screens and taking right. a few right. touchdowns. important in his league. And that will help, hopefully, alleviate so much of the pressure that Ezekiel Elliott and this offensive line is facing in the box. Mm. If we can have just a little bit of respect... People have to shade their safeties over. And I think this helps a Michael Gallup. I think this helps a Cole Beasley. Michael Gallup's really coming on, guys. I was really impressed. If you watch the film of him in the Washington game, even the balls that weren't thrown to him, he was getting he was getting real life open out there and getting real (laughs) separation. I don't know. Did you see the review of his stutter and go on his touchdown? Yes. I mean the the route running capability he showed there is someone of an A-B perspective, an Antonio Brown. That's what it looked like. Oh, yeah, it was elite. Um, it was an elite move. He turns his head. He turns his body. His numbers are facing sold it. Dak. He sold it. I mean, if <laughs> I think anyone watching that kind of jumped. And then when he goes by, you're just like, yeah. you're playing the OS defense. it was smooth. It was <laughs> it so was. smooth. It, didn't, it was very fluid. So, I mean, that's exciting because now, you know, like you said, who, who do we shade? Now we know that shade more like it's going to go towards Cooper. So that frees up. Beasley in a slot where he can do a lot of work when he doesn't have to have damage. bracket Absolutely. coverage. Um, Michael Gallup can now have these one-on-one matches where he proved last week he can win. Um, so, gosh, there's a lot of positives. But the other positive, too, I want to point out before we get to the negatives is his personality. So, a lot of people, there's been this perception that Dak didn't actually work well with Dez's out going nature and and obviously Des burned a lot of bridges within the organization or else he'd be on the team right now I think there's a lot of credence to that Amari Cooper is not that type of person he's very quiet keeps to himself um has the moniker of of someone that looks like they're just a hard worker you know think that's a tribute to Saban in Alabama absolutely because Julio Jones is like that too all right absolutely Julio Jones is just like that you don't see it they don't have a whole bunch of loud Right, you know, if you look at a lot of the, the the type of guys they recruit and develop in that program, you don't see them in the news. It's like OBJ. almost like you know some sort of military reprogramming. But that's <laughs> that's for the tinfoil hat guys. <laughs> Going back though to the now we have to address the negatives. I want to start mm. here. Why does the brother have mutton chops? Can someone <laughs> tell me? I'm watching the interview. He comes in there with the mutton chops on his face. <laughs> Like some Polish wrestler, I'm like, I can't, I can't take you seriously. Oh man, I got nothing for that. I got nothing for someone, that. Just, someone, is that the hey, move now? Is that the Dade County move let in me Florida? Know. Like, let me know. y'all, let me know. Why was he wearing a, a Raiders hoodie like coming into the building? I also put that on the Cowboys <laughs> PR people. Before those Seriously. cameras start rolling, get him a damn Cowboys hoodie. Get him a shirt. That, I'm going to put shirt. that on him. With you, I put that on the Cowboys <laughs> It is not his responsibility to Wake come up. to a new team and purchase some Cowboys gear. This is no, the no, issue with culture, man. Like, you Here. think some dude going to roll into the Steelers facility <laughs> rocking Browns colors oh, or whatever? Like, even, even if it doesn't have the logo on it, right. get my man a, a Cowboys right. something. At least a navy blue shirt. You know, Cowboy, get him a Cowboy blue pullover. A Cowboy something. blue polo. Something. Something like a soccer Raiders. That's funny, though. <laughs> but in all, in all seriousness, the drops. <laughs> yeah. The drops. The drops. The drops. He does have a lot. Even this year. It comes... So, th- to me, the two negatives, the drops, and he's a werewolf. And what do I mean by werewolf? Those of you who play fantasy, there's a term called werewolf where somebody comes out once a month, blows up, and then the rest of the month, they don't do anything. It used to be Vincent Jackson, for those of you who remember when he was on Tampa Bay yeah, and the Chargers. For sure. He would have the one game where he has 12 catches for 150 yards, two touchdowns, and then you don't get anything from him. The next week he has two catches for 13 yards. Right. So with Amari Cooper, again, you know, some people I've heard, some people defer blame to Derek Carr. But even if you look at the numbers his second year when, you know, he was a pro bowler and they did go to the playoffs and ultimately lose to the Houston Texans, he had, you know, he got 1,000 yards, but it was like, 
150 yards here. It, right. it wasn't that week to week thing. And is that and, and with the Cowboys and I'll, actually I want to get to your negatives because I have I have a place where I'm going with that. <laughs> but we need c- constant consistent production. I can't have the 200 yards one week and mm-hmm. I don't hear from you for three weeks. Well, I think you'll get the targets for that consistency. Okay. Will that translate into production? To be determined. That's the question. Right. Exactly. Uh, for me, the negatives, I'm with you on the drops. That's critical because if you're going to get the target and you're going to drop them, you're not producing. Um, and so there's that's, film where he's he's dropping balls without even being touched. Right. Wide open. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of, you know, one of those where you're so wide open that you just lose focus and drop the ball. Sure. Like, I, it's hard for me to understand. But so the drops are concerning. The, the value... I think it's a negative. As in, we traded a future... Granted, he's 24. I get that. He's young. I get that. But when you're talking about a, a first-round draft pick, you want someone that's solid, that you know has shown production year over year without the shortcomings that Cooper has had. So If you're trading for... If you're trading, if you're for, trading right. for, for somebody If you're like trading that, that first-round draft pick, yeah. which we did, so... I feel like that's a negative. And I've heard I've heard a lot of people come on because I've argued the value value thing, and I had a lot of people come on and say, "Well, you know, with value, well, we would have just used that pick on a wide receiver anyway. So what's the difference here, Steve? The difference here is the financial commitment mm-hmm. with the Mari Cooper. The way the salary cap is structured now, what they've done with the rookie wage scales, right. you don't really have to make that long term heavy cap commitment Three, until they're years. three or four years in, right? So with the Mari Cooper, because he's already Going into his fifth year next year in 2019, the Raiders had already picked up his fifth year option. Right. So that third now I do expect the Cowboys to renegotiate and start to move money around and maybe front load the contract like they did with like Miles Austin and all these other people when they actually got in trouble for that. But I expect them to move money around. They did that with Travis Frederick mm-hmm. and other players. But that's where we get into dead money situations. Mm-hmm. You know, when you do that, there's 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 a you know it's a balance to everything. Cost doing business in my opinion. Exactly. So that's a cons- like to me, it's not an even swap because of the financial commitment. Right. I know he's young, and I know yes, technically we would have drafted a, maybe. A, I don't. I don't know that definitively. And and also those of you who are saying that there's not this isn't a great wide receiver crop, you, you you're kind of discounting the potential of the underclassmen, whether it's a Colin Johnson, Hollywood Brown. There are real guys right. out there. Um, people who you have know, size. I and mean, people, yeah, the, 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 the size, brother from Arizona. They have prototype Absolutely. for the NFL. They just haven't had the production that you're so, in college. So, I mean, let's not just throw all these guys under the bus. And, and I know the track right. record with wide receivers the last few years has been shoddy. But, yes. but again, we are all the way in now. You're making a right. financial commitment. Right. And that's why it's imperative as fans and the organization. Jason Garrett, to your point about us needing to see Dak Prescott, this needs to work for Dak Prescott. This needs to work for this coaching staff. I've already advocated mm-hmm. for them to be fired. I'm not going to keep, you know, beating that drum. Y'all know where I stand. Unless they do something else stupid, which I know they will, I'll, I'll go Man, back to it. But this is, if they can make this work, then they can save their jobs. They have an right. opportunity to save their jobs. Right. At least All, the whole offensive years. staff. I want to see, you know, this is where Sanjay Lyle, the wide receiver coach, comes into play. Scott Linehan, no more excuses. Because the one thing I really like about this trade, to be honest with you, that I didn't think about when I made that emotional response, was they've eliminated the gray area. Right. There's no more gray area. Right. They went out and got that need. Because the gray area before was, is it Dak or is it the wide receivers? Is it Dak or is it the wide receivers? Now, we're going to find out. Right. Got a Pro Bowl wide receiver. And look, for, for what y'all gave up and the financial commitment that's going to come, to me, this coaching staff needs to win the division. They need to make the – because they're not going to get in via wild card at this point. Right. They need to win the division. Bottom line. Or else I don't want to hear – if they go 9-7 and seven and don't get in, goodbye. Goodbye. I'm serious. Still not production. It's not, it's not enough. Yeah, it's not, it's not enough. Um, last thing I want to wrap up with you is, you know, big picture. Mm-hmm. You know, what is the outlook the rest of the season? We haven't played the Eagles yet. You know, we still have Atlanta. So we have to go back and right the wrongs of last week's Atlanta game. We are going there. Just big picture, what, what are your thoughts? I mean, big picture, it's hard to deviate from the home and away. I mean, at home, we're one team away, we're different. So, I mean, 8-8, eight and eight, 
seems logical. Will that get us into the playoffs? We'll see. I mean, our division is chaotic right now. Washington has a two-game lead, but what, we're in week eight, week seven? Mm -hmm. We still have time to make that up. Um, But I agree with you that we need to make the playoffs this year. We've made the right moves, um, in my opinion, with a stout defense to... Do you think there's any other trades they should make before the trade deadline? Oh, that's a good question. Um, You know, do I think there's any other trade? If we could find a veteran safety... Um, mm. I think that might help. Mm. Um, All right, I'm with you there. If we can find a veteran safety, because be at that. this point, if we're if we're in trading draft picks, we right. might as well go all right. the, like I mean, if, what else do we need? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that we should Tied have gave in. up. Jeff Jeff Swain got hurt. Yeah, and, and I'm not and, even saying that we should have gave up a first round for Earl Thomas. But imagine our secondary with someone that caliber right now. Right. Um, um, so I think that if we are going to make if we're going to make a move, that's better. what it needs to be. Um, get us a veteran who can produce in the secondary, someone who can line those guys up um, and, you know, be that echo to the Sean Lees who is coordinating the defense. Awesome. I have nothing to add to that. I want to go into, just to, to close out the video and, and, and our podcast, who's your team MVP thus far? You know, we've, we've, gotcha. we've, we've, we've talked sure. about, you know, where we are right now. We're three and four. Mm-hmm. The struggles on the road, mm-hmm. the success we've had at home. Mm-hmm. But in terms of consistent performance, you know, I, I want to end this video on a positive. <laughs> For sure. Because we've, we've done it. a lot of, you know, just even within the Cowboys fan base, I think we've a lot of back and forth on the trade, but I think we are right. on the same page that this... We have to root for this to work. I mean, we're rooting for it. Do we agree? Do I agree but, with it? No. But, but hey, who, who are you, who's your guy this year that you're looking at and saying, like, if I have to... We had an awards banquet or something, like... This is the Cowboys MVP this year. Um, so I believe I alluded to him in the last video, but Byron Jones. I think that's who does it for me personally. I think um, just the consistency that he's shown week in, week out, and defending the opposite team's number one defender, um, having the efficiency that he's had. How he's think, graded. Right. Absolutely. How he's graded on um, defense. Number efficiency. one corner in the league at a position that's the f- arguably, I would say, after quarterback. Center. Left tackle, I, I I have left tackle. This is just my personal thing. Left mm-hmm. tackle, and then you could debate between pass rusher or corner. Okay, like that's how important and to be the best in the league at such an important mm-hmm. position where, right. you know, you see last year Denzel Ward went fourth overall. Right. Like corner Marshawn Lattimore the year before, corner such an important position and him having to go through a position change. Right, he went from safety converted. But I'm a lead in here. My guy, Chris Richard, would mm-hmm. probably be my MVP. And he's not even a player because he's the one that came in. Right away, he shut all that down. Byron's playing corner. Right. I watched the tape. He's a corner. No problem. We move him over to the corner position. He becomes a dominant player. Mm-hmm. I actually agree with you. I think he is the MVP right. so far of the team because he's allowed this defense. And I know Cheeto's gotten a lot of work on the other side. I know Anthony Brown's gotten a lot of but we we're dictating where the football's going. Right. They have a lot of work on purpose. Right. On it's purpose. Intended. They, it's, have bracket they gotta throw it. Yeah. <laughs> so and our pass rush has been spotty. Right. You know, it's been great some weeks and then some weeks like last week I was a little frustrated because we weren't getting home as much. But when you have that lockdown guy on the other side, right. it just takes so much pressure Simplifies off the of, game. Off your football team. Um, just think of the Jets back when Revis Island was a thing, how they could just put him on whichever receiver, whether it be a number one or number two, and know that that, absolutely. that guy's going to be shut down. I think that's what we're trying to mold. I think he's actually falling into that mold of being that type of elite corner. I think, just to fall, fall off here, like the honorable mention would be Ezekiel Elliott. I, I couldn't you know, We go as he goes in terms, of his pr- in terms of his production. He had one of his best games of his career against Detroit. He's been... You know, when he's had the opportunities, the only bad game he really had to me was the Seattle game where it was just like, you know, and he took he took accountability for that. All the other games, even when he's gotten shut down, it's it's not really his fault. And you can make the mm-hmm. argument maybe he's not MVP because of that. But overall, uh, I, if, if you want to come on in the comments and y'all let us know who who's y'all think, who's yeah. your MVP exactly. And if you have Ezekiel Elliott, if you have Byron Jones, some people may be inclined to say, a Jalen Smith or, or or Demarcus Lawrence, so you know. I would definitely say most improve is Jalen Smith. Jalen Smith, absolutely most mm-hmm. improve. Um, but you know, it's it's been, you know, it's been a very roller coaster ride season for the Dallas Cowboys thus far. Seriously. And now Jerry Jones, you know, as in in, in Jerry Jones fashion, made this bye week <laughs> so exciting 
with this trade and causing the debate. And and now we have something to look forward to Monday night, Tennessee right. Titans. I want to see Mari Cooper rolling. I right. want it. They have time. He's had actually two bye weeks in a row because right? the was, Raiders. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, coming in, you know, he's now rocking – Number nineteen, akin to our boy Miles Austin. So, <laughs> you know, just just want to see uh, where we're going to end up. Brandon, thank yeah. you for your time Steve, today, sir. Always a privilege, man. man great conversation. Absolutely, guys. We'll continue to have Brandon on, just getting his thoughts about the Cowboys. He he's a diehard as much oh, as I man. am. So, DTID for you, people in Dallas know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> they know what I mean. All right, y'all. A lot of context, but <laughs> get us, give us a shout out. We appreciate it as yeah, always. Appreciate you guys. Thank you.